Needed it, you know. It's nice to get back on the track again. I was going to say, you must be pleased to get back in action after all the hassle of the last few days. Uh, well, no, no, no. The hassle has been uh, pretty minimal. It's, uh, you know, just getting it all together again, really, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, just another athletic performance. A question of uh, relifting your spirits, perhaps, a little sure, bit? Sure, yeah. You know, uh, the, uh, the last time I raced was Saturday, so I've had until, uh, until since then to uh, just sort a few things out. Slightly different tactically this time. Yeah, I mean, it was just a matter of going through and uh, going through the heat with the semi-final tomorrow night, which will be uh, very, very much tougher. Right, well, did you pay close attention to uh, Steve's run there? I watched all the heats, yeah. I watched them all. With any particular interest? Uh, everybody that uh, I'm likely to have to face tomorrow night has to be watched and thought about, and, uh, you know, Steve as well. It's like a heavyweight title fight between you two. Do you <laughs> enjoy the company of other athletes and talking about athletics? I don't... I enjoy athletes, I think, because we have common ground. It's it's like belonging to a, sp a specialised club, really. You can talk about things that you have in common. But um, I don't enjoy talking athletics a great deal. I know it sounds strange. Maybe I'm I'm not just saying that, but I, I'm not a great um, statistician. You know, I, I, uh, I don't sort of worry too much about facts, figures, or anything like that. In, in reputations. Well, in reputations, I suppose. In many ways, I, I enjoy people's company. I enjoy anybody that's involved in athletics. I enjoy their company talking about most other things apart from athletics, really. Well, that's a strange, I would say strange, that this intriguing thing about you is that I know you fairly well, and uh, you're an interesting, lively mind, interested in a lot of things. Um, the public doesn't know you at all, and that's a self-inflicted sort of Greta Garbo image you've got now uh, uh, of never really revealing what you're, what you're about. Why is that? Um, I think it's self-protection, really. Um, I don't want to become public property. It's it's very difficult for me. I'm a very shy person. Although you know, a lot of people think it's the complete opposite because of the, the media coverage that I get. A lot of people think you're not shy because you're very on the track. You're an aggressive animal. Well, uh, that's always the case sometimes, isn't it? I think you know the introvert-extrovert situation. Which which do you prefer, being Jekyll or Hyde? <laughs> uh, all depends which half is Jekyll and which half is Hyde. <laughs> no, I think that um, I just I just enjoy being myself. 90% of the time, and I vet the runner 10% of the time. But I vet the runner can't can't dominate my everyday life, which is what I do 99% of the time. So therefore, that person must is more important to me, and I must protect that person if you can understand but, that. But, but doesn't concealing, you know, Steve, the, the private person, bring an awful lot of pressure on Steve, the, the runner? Yes, it it does. But then I thrive on pressure. I really do. I mean, one of the very few athletes I think that. The more pressure you put on, it's like a coil spring. Mm. The more you, I But can do you take. actually go out and look for it then? No, I can take it. It's not a case of looking for it. It comes to me quite readily. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you're not sort of anti-authoritarian. No, just no. Because it gives you. A not the rebel it. without the cause. No, I'm no James Dean of the athletics world. No, no, I don't think so. If if I go against the thing, it's because I think it's wrong, not because I like, enjoy the actual process of fighting it. Well, now here you are. You've got well three world records. You've got an Olympic gold, and we hope you're going to get another one. You are a superstar, or as Brian Hooper, the pole vaulter, said, a megastar. Megastar. And that, that's an, uh, something's happened here that's going to affect the rest of your life. Your now name is in the record books forever. Um, how are you going to come to terms with that? Is it going to change your life? Yes. <laughs> no. I can't see it, honestly. I mean, you, you, again, you're making me into something which I don't no, I'm, believe I'm I am. You know, I, I said to Harry last night, I come back and I put the medal on the table and I, and I said to him, that just goes to prove that any idiot can become an Olympic champion. <laughs> in, in fact, when you came down to the party last night, you forgot to bring the medal with you. Oh, yeah, uh, it was in my bag, and um, I was just more intent on getting something to eat, I think, than worry about the Olympic medal. Um, and it was important last night to come and eat with the family, wasn't it? Oh, very important, yeah. Um, well, like anything, you have to share things. You have to share success and failure to, um, to appreciate it, I think, with people. And, and I come down and saw my family and saw my friends, and I think that was the most important thing. And then I had to get back and see my coach before the day was over. It was getting late, and I had to get back and see him before the day was over. And I also had to get in touch with my girlfriend, which is even more important because she's in England. She can't share it with me. So I tried to do everything yesterday and um, may not give everybody the right amount of time, depending on the effort that they put in. But I hope that they appreciate that, you know, that I was really thinking of everybody at that time. The family is very important to you, isn't it? You're very close, isn't it? Um, we enjoy each other's company. I mean, everybody thinks that my mother is, you know, I, I've got some sort of oppidus complex, and my mother's a, a megalomaniac, which, 
which is uh, quite farcical, really. But um, we just enjoy each other's company. We get on very well as a family, you know. As a, as a, as a son, you know, I think uh, you know that I enjoy my mother and father as parents, and I think hope, hopefully they enjoy me as their son. Yeah. Do you feel sometimes there's a family that, that you, you've got a wall built around you to keep out the outside world that's threatening you? I wouldn't that you withdraw into you. I wouldn't say that we, we treat it as an us and them situation. No, I, I think in many ways um, we've probably got more contact with the outside world. My father works, you know, in, in a market where he's, you know, he's, con you know, completely in contact with the public most of the time. And uh, I don't withdraw. I mean, despite what a lot of people say, I, I'm in contact with the you know, a lot of people in Brighton, you know, a great deal of the time. And my mother is definitely someone that doesn't withdraw from the world. She, in fact, attacks it a great deal a lot of the time. <laughs> so, um, in many ways, you know, that sort of image that we've, we've built a moat and a wall around us is, is, is completely false, I think. You mentioned the family business, which is, which is re really a calf, isn't it? Well, that's one of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we talk about the over-empire, it's a little calf and things like that, but no. Uh, my mother runs um, a calf in a park and my, my, my father uh, works in the market, open market in Brighton. How involved are you with that? I help him out. I mean, that would be an excuse for a job, wouldn't it? But I help him out, and I help my mother out, and I help the family out, and they help me out. You know, it's sort of a working relationship, really. I heard people say, well, it's all right for Steve. He doesn't have to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, but I don't think the majority of athletes work now. I mean, to be quite honest, I mean, if we're going to be fair, a lot of the people that are in the team now, the majority of them have took time off of work almost a year or so. They've been sponsored by Sports Aid Foundation and various other sponsors. So in other words, they've had as much time to prepare as I have, really. And to say that, you know, that Steve's, you know, doesn't have to work, I think is, um, well, it's slightly sour grapes, I think, probably on their part. Um, would, do you feel that life has to be virtually committed 100% to athletics? Or, or do you sometimes wish that you were a computer programmer or a missionary or...? No, no, I, I don't think my, um, I don't think my whole life is committed to athletics at all. You know, I think it's... For the, work, for the amount of work and the amount of time and the effort I put in, it's very, the results that I get uh, you know, are quite phenomenal, really. What, what other interests do you have? Uh, you've got to, tell us about the car. Uh, it's your passion, isn't it? Oh, uh, I love working on cars. It's, it's really, I mean, I'm not the mechanic grease monkey which the press seem to sort of want me to be, you know, with dirt, grease, whatever. I mean, for me, it's a therapy. It's, it's to get away from athletics and just to get outside and work on a car that's wrong, to fix it and to make it go again. Is, um, you know, it's a therapy for me. It helps me to, to relax, which is important. What sort of a driver are you? Are you aggressive? Terrible. No, I'm not very aggressive at all. That's the thing, really. Um, all my aggression goes on the track. Mm. Just as, a, as an athlete, you know, what, how are you going to attack this 1,500 metres? You, you've got the pressure on you again now. You've won one gold medal. Are you going to be a, a Peter Snell? How, how are you going to look ahead now to, to the final? <coughs> I, I, at the moment, I haven't even thought about it. Um, I don't look ahead to the final, I look ahead to the heats. I must take each race as it comes. I can get knocked out in the heats, I can get knocked out in the semis, or I could even, you know, uh, finish last place in the final, as far as I'm concerned now. Um, the big problem for me now is to relax, um, get back to doing this, some basic training, get back to sort of getting into a routine again, and then trying to motivate myself again for three races, which, after you win a gold, I suppose, is very difficult. And not only that, but there are other runners now that want to prove that um, what they did in the 800 or, 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 you know, my result in the 800 was in no way a reflection on their true, true you know, calibre in the 15. Of all the runners you're likely to come up against, who, who might you worry about most or who might be a threat? The, there are, you know, some guys, I mean, you, if you looked at the 800 metres, you would have probably never believed that a Russian would have been a big threat. But he was, you know, and so... It would be wrong for me to say that certain people are going to be threats. Obviously, you can you can quote names like Sebastian Coe, he's going to be there again. And you can quote people like Jürgen Straub, I've got a great deal of respect for. Seb, fantastic. Absolutely incredible. Marvellous race. One apiece. That's boys' own paper stuff. How do you feel right now? Oh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Lost. Oh, yeah, lost. Yeah. Lost. We said earlier, you know, if you got the bike back soon enough, if you, if you could get your courage back to go in and race, you know, you, you really did have the chance within a week to come back after what was a demoralizing defeat in the end. Yeah, shattering. And you came back and came yeah. back well. Thanks. Must be a marvelous feeling. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's, oh, I don't know. Terrific.
What do you say about that? And this could go on for years. You and Steve, 8 and oh, 15, Christ, 15 you know, and 8. What yeah. a piece. I mean, it, Magic. it's just so great for Britain, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I wonder where Dad is right now and what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, I saw him standing up over there with a Union Jack. Did you? Oh, fine. And you got a million supporters back home, too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And no one would deny you that one. No. Magnificent. Thanks And tactically, that. everything right. You must feel delighted with that. One out of six isn't bad. <laughs> one out of six on the tank. Seb, terrific. Really was. Thanks very much. You know, a privilege to be here and watch you run like that. Lovely. Well done. Many more.